Hi there, it's Jeff here. In this video, let's spend a few minutes thinking about the important concept of economic inactivity. Now, the economically inactive are people of working age, but they're not in a job and they have not been actively seeking work. And a lot of this is now linked to the impact of the pandemic, in particular the rise in long-term illness and sickness. So inactivity refers to people of working age, typically 16 to 64, who are neither in work nor actively seeking a job. So they're not technically part of the active labour force. Now, there are many reasons for inactivity, and oftentimes there's multiple reasons for one person or one family. Education and training is one. Many inactive people are full-time students staying on in tertiary or higher education, or trainees who are focused on their studies. It could be health and disability issues. People might be suffering from a long-term chronic illness or a disability that actively prevents them from looking for work and finding a job. Uh, there may be some instances of early retirement. People have chosen to leave the workforce before the official state retirement age in a country. And increasingly, uh, people may not be able to look for work or find a job because they're looking after children, acting as carers for younger people, or elderly relatives. So they may not actively be able to look for work because of those caregiving responsibilities. And this chart in the UK shows the percentage of economically inactive people in the UK over the last 25 years or so. And you can see the rise there in the percentage uh, who are students. But here's, uh, here's a really important idea. This is the percentage of inactive people who are long-term uh, sick or have a temporary sickness. And that percentage has gone up. It's now the dominant single cause. A lot of that is linked to long COVID, in particular adults over the age of 50. Youth inactivity is particularly important. And you can see there's been a sizable increase again in the last couple of years. So as of... 2024, just over 3 million young people in this country are economically inactive. Now, many of those are students, but not all. There is a group of people called NEETS, NEETS, N-E-E-T-S, not in employment, not in education or training. Now, why does inactivity matter? It's a really important economic concept to be aware of for macro exams. First of all, fewer workers, slower growth. If you have fewer people working, less goods and services being produced, so the growth rate of the economy can slow down, the trend growth. Economic activity creates a burden on the rest of the people who are paying taxes. When fewer people are in work, fewer people pay taxes. That means higher taxes or worse public services for everyone else. Increasing pressure on public services. So we know that economic inactivity is leading to increased reliance on benefits and increased pressure on the healthcare systems. Rising activity adds pressure to already stretched NHS and welfare systems. And then, of course, there's the loss of skills and potential of the people concerned themselves. The longer people are out of work, not, long, not looking for work, the harder it is to come back. Their skills tend to depreciate. Confidence drops and potential is wasted. Economists have a word for this. It's called hysteresis. Young people missing out. Well, uh, over 3 million young people currently out of the labour force, now often for good reasons, but if you have a high rate of needs, that's bad news for their future, in particular their life to earnings, and bad news for the future health of the economy because young people will be the workers of the future and the taxpayers of the future. And given the ageing population, the rising median age, the shifting dependency ratio, as the UK population ages, we need more not fewer working people, especially younger people, to support pensions and care costs. So economic inactivity is an important measure. Know what some of the causes are, in particular what some of the consequences are, and have a think about which policies might be more effective in getting people back into the active labour force. Thanks for joining in this video.